Again, welcome to <clears throat> unit five mini lesson. This is unit five mini lesson. In this mini lesson, we're going to discuss about languages and software. As we know, there are two major languages, the higher level language and also the machine language. Machine language are normally the language that the computer system understand. <laughs> and the CPU understand. Higher level language is mostly in English and normally we have to compile it or interpret it to machine language so that the computer system can understand. So let's go through some few terms before we get detail on it. So first, what is the hardware? Hardware is the machine itself and it's various individual equipment. So hardware is a physical component of a computer so example can be the monitor the printer the cpu the memory these are called the hardware the software is the programming language or in this case we will say the instruction that is stored in a story device uh, such as the hard drive or flash driving and these instructions must be followed in order to perform a specific task so software refers to the set of computer programs which are used in applications and also operating system. It is a collection of programs which increase the capabilities of the hardware. Also software guide the computer at every step where to start and stop doing a particular job. So that's why we say the software is the instruction. It's the instructions that the computer follow to solve a problem. So the process of software development is called programming. <coughs> we have the software types such as application software. Application software normally is a set of programs that perform a specific task, such as the Microsoft Word, <coughs> Microsoft Excel, computer games. These are all different types of application software. So example is giving you Excel, database system, graphics, accounting, word processing. These are all again application software. And application software can be written using different programming languages such as COBOL, Fortran, C++, VB stands for Visual Basic, Visual C or C++, and then Java. System software is the software that interacts with the computer hardware. So example of a system software is the operating system. So when you switch on a computer, the programs written in ROM, ROM stands for read-only memory is permanent. It's a executor which activates different units of the computer and make it ready for you to work. So this set of programs are called a system software. So system software again is a software that interacts with computer hardware. So system software allow application packages to be run on the computer. What this means is that in the computer system, we have three main layers. The first layer, which is the lower layer, is the computer hardware, such as memory, CPU, monitor, etc. The second layer will be our operating system that directly, again, interacts with the computer hardware. And also the application software will be the top level. So we use this normally interact with the application software and the message are sent to the system software, which is the operating system and the operating system will interact with the computer hardware. So computer manufacturers normally build and supply the system software with the operating system, with the computer system. So that's why again, when we buy a computer from a store, always it comes with an operating system such as DOS, Unix or Windows or even the Mac computer also. Out of this, Unix is the multi-user operating system, which means many users can use it at the same time, access the specific material at the same time. So programming languages are specially developed so that you could pass your data instruction to the computer to do a specific job. And as we said, there are two. This is our question number two in unit five, IP assignment. There are two major types of programming language, the low level language and high level language. 
low level language is also known as machine language so low level language are further divided into machine language and ensemble language high level language are for scientific applications such as fortran c language java visual basic uh, Perl, and so many type of different again high level languages these languages are normally in the form of english or using digits arithmetic operators so we need to compile it or and transform it to machine language for computer system to understand. So machine language is only the language that computer understand directly. There's no need to translate it. And the only advantage is that the program of a machine language run very fast. Assembly language is the first step to improve the programming language. So you should know that computer can handle numbers and letters. And we have a set of symbols and letters that form the assembly language. And we can translate the program as required using assembly language to machine language using the translator program. And the translator program is called assembler. Advantage is that assembly language is easier to understand because it's in the form of English and save a lot of time and effort. Also, it's easier to correct errors or modify the program instructions. Assembly language has the same efficiency of execution as the machine level language, so it's kind of faster. But the disadvantage is that assembly language is machine dependent. So a program written for one computer might not run in other computers. This is one of the big advantage of Java and some of the modern programming language. Uh, it's, some, uh, it's not machine independent, which is, is a neutral, can be run in a platform. So higher level language is the language that normally written in English words and logic of a problem. So higher level language uses symbols, languages such as English, uh, mathematical symbols, plus minus, percent, division, etc. So any higher level language has to be converted to machine language. So we normally use something we call a compiler or interpreter to compile the source code. Normally the source code is called a, at the higher level language is called a source code. So we compile it to a machine language for the computer to understand it. Advantage is that it's very, very easy to learn, especially for humans. It's in the form of English and that's our language. So it's very easy to understand and also to learn it by humans. We need a compiler. So a compiler is a program that will translate the high level language to machine language. And it is called compiler because it compiles machine language instruction for every program instruction of higher level language. So a program written by a programmer in higher level language is called a source code or source program. Then after we compile it, it's called an object program. So a compiler can translate only those source programs which has been written in that language. Interpret also works same as compiler, but the difference is that compiler will convert all the code at once whereas interpreter will convert it one at a time. But it's again the same thing, it will convert the higher level language into machine language, the interpreter. So here we say interpreter takes one statement of higher level language, translate into machine language and immediately execute it. Then you go back, get a new set. But compiler will compile the whole program at once and then can run it. So the advantage of interpreter compared to compiler is that it's very fast to respond to changes in source program. And also it doesn't require much memory. That's the interpreter. The disadvantage of interpreter is that it is time consuming. Since it's going to compile one line at a time, it will take a lot of time compared to compiler. 
So this will be the conclusion of our unit five uh, lectures. And in these lectures, we should know at least what is the difference between machine language and higher level language. And that's one of our questions for unit five IP assignment. And also what is assembly language, how to convert a higher level language to machine language. Again, wish everybody the best. Thank you.